Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us. This obviously isn't Sharon. <laughs> Is that a surprise? <laughs> But we have become good buddies because uh, what a gift this guy has. Conrad Miller. Uh, let me just give you a little. He's a gospel artist. Uh, and we're going to get into his testimony, which is absolutely phenomenal. You, you, you have to stay where you are. You will love his music and want more. So I'm going to give you more after we talk for a while. And we find out all of the accolades this guy has received and the blessings that you have been to countless people. We were just talking in the green room. I, uh, you know, what a gift. And I said, do you realize it? And he kind of looked at me. And I know he wants to say yes, but it, it's like, should I say yes? <laughs> I mean, but it, it's amazing. It's like talking to a phenomenal artist. I'm talking about a guy that paints, and he looks at you. And I've had him actually do it. And uh -huh. they'll, they'll say, well, well, you could do that. And I'm going. Give me a break. It's like somebody like yourself, well, you know, you probably could sing or impossible. God has gifted you with this. And at what age did you discover there's something there different than my playmates? Pro well, my mother used to tell me that uh, my uh, debut was at the age of four. It was unscheduled, unscripted. And what uh, did you do? It, it was uh, the homegoing service for my father's father, my paternal grandfather, and I was sitting in the back of the church and just started singing. And that was really, that was the first time. Do you time remember the did. song? I'm going to tell my age if I tell you that. It's uh, Eddie Fisher, Oh My Papa. Oh, yes. Was, well, he was one of my favorite singers. Oh, he was, yeah, he was great. He was great. I, I, we'll just get age out of the way. I'm 75, so you're a <laughs> lot younger than me, okay? Yeah. So, so. That, that you just started? I just, I just started singing that in honor of my grandfather. Um, and I, I don't remember it, but really when, when I became aware that there was something special going on, I was probably about uh, 10 or 12. And the choir director of the adult choir at my home church, my childhood church, asked me to come sing with the adult choir. And uh, that, was, that was sort of, sort of the beginning. And today, this this album. In fact, you'll see the website on the screen. Write it down. Go to his website and get his DVD. There it is on the screen. Uh, not only is it just good looking to lay on the coffee table, <laughs> but it, you will enjoy this music. I've played it, and. Uh, uh, Sue, our floor director, she goes, she's back there going, I love him, I love him. I said, Sue, you love everybody I have. She said, I love him. Uh. But uh, early this morning, he's one of these guys that arrives on time. I mean, oh, yeah. I walk in and I'm hearing this great music and you're just going through the run through. What is your first song? The first song that I'll do today is one called I'm Living. I'm Living to Live Again. Now, that has a testimony. Do you write these? I did not write this one. The two that I'll do today, I did not write. I wrote three of the songs on this particular project. Uh, this one was written by a young woman by the name of Jackie Cordery up in the Philadelphia area. And the uh, first time I heard it, uh, I had chills. And, and, and I knew it was the spirit saying, this is one you should put on this project. Wow. Yeah. So she wrote this from a personal? She wrote this one specifically for this CD. And uh, from a personal experience. So, and in fact, we're uh, we're planning to release it as a single in a couple of weeks, right after Mother's Day, as a matter so of fact. So we're getting a debut here. Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of. How about that? Good to have you, buddy. God bless thank you. you. God bless Come you, over sir. and talk to me when you get finished. We'll do. We'll do. Thank you. I'm living 
Cause I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, yes, I'm living. Said I'm living to live again. To walk the streets of gold. Living to live again. Oh, I'm living. I'm living. I'm living. I'm living. Yes, I'm living. Said I'm living to live again. Live again. You hear all that applause? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank Good you so have much. You. Thank you. I tell you, that is, is that R and B? It, well, it's got an R, R and yeah. B flavor yeah. to it, but, but it's classic, uh, classic contemporary or neo contemporary gospel. I got to tell our audience, uh, in case you're wondering where Sharon, my first wife, is, she's in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. That's in the Pigeon Forge area, with our daughter and family members, and that's one of their favorite destinations. So, all you folks that watch us in that area, hello. My wife is walking around someplace shopping. <laughs> okay. Great to have you. Thank you so much. It's a blessing for me to be here. It is. Uh, now, you, was your ba background, did you have uh, uh, broadcast uh, schooling? I, I minored in radio and TV in undergraduate school. My major was uh, music. Um, and I went on and got my master's wow. in, uh, in voice and opera, as a matter of fact, the University of Michigan. Now, you've had some accolades. Some of the awards, what, what are they? Well, I've, I've been nominated for a number of, uh, of gospel music awards over, over the years uh, and have had the opportunity to do a number of things, uh, including singing at Kennedy Center and Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Um, Can I touch you? Here you go. Oh, please. Go. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a, uh, I wouldn't say a country boy, but I'm not really a country boy. But I grew up in the South, uh, and, and really I'm about doing what God would have me to do. Really, that's and and uh, I, I can't imagine walking out on a platform, just say in the Kennedy Center, yeah, in D.C. I mean, did you have butterflies that would not land? Uh, fortunately, they did land, but I, I always have uh, have butterflies before I minister, um, before I teach a Sunday school class. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of, of that performance anxiety that we all feel, but uh, you know, if you don't have a little bit of that, yeah. maybe something's wrong. Are you an introvert? Um, not really. Okay. Not really. I, I'm, I'm a pretty outgoing person overall. Do you, do you enjoy concerts, that kind of, that kind of venue? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I guess one way of, of saying it, and I don't hesitate to tell people, I'm, I'm, there's a bit of ham in me. Um, I really, really do love being in front of people um, and, and sharing the gift uh, that God has given me. But it's, you know, more than, than the, the, the voice, more than the music, it's the message wow. that, uh, that I'm honored, that I'm blessed to share. Just some information that you folks will understand when I tell you this. This is in the USA. Suicide happens every 16 minutes. 100 or, or 1 million attempts annually. And the guy sitting right here did, did that very thing in my early teens. Mm. Uh, and you say among black men, eight per 100,000. The highest age in that particular category, 15 to 24. Mm -hmm.
Now, you are a member of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and uh, if you can explain that organization, and then how are you tied into that? And that goes into your testimony. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, that particular organization is one which was started really, as, they, as the name said, to try to prevent suicide from happening, to, to try to understand some of the things that are going on that lead people to uh, attempt to take their own lives. Depression is a big thing, isn't it? Depression Feeling is... Feeling no hope. Yes. Uh, mental illnesses in general, so depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, all of those, all of those types of conditions uh, uh, contribute to it, to mental illness being the, uh, the leading cause. And now, is it, is it always attached to mental illness? It is, it is not. It is not necessarily attached to mental illness. That just happens to be um, the, the, the one umbrella under yeah. which many of the uh, attempts fall. Um, but there are also people who, who just lose hope um, as a result of changes in family situations, changes on the job, um, their, their business going south, that, that kind of thing. And they don't feel that there is uh, a way out for them. And, and they think that the only way uh, for things to get better is for them to take their own lives, which is unfortunately sort of the opposite of, of what the reality is. Um, because they tend to leave uh, their loved ones uh, much, much worse off um, after they after they take their own lives, and that's you know really where the link comes for for me. Tell me about Lauren. Lauren was uh, and and still is to an extent the joy of my life. She, uh, Lauren was my uh, was my daughter. I had two children. My son Andrew uh, turned 28 a few weeks ago, uh, and Lauren uh, took her life the day after her 16th birthday. Um, Lauren had suffered from. Um, anxiety uh, and, and panic attacks for about four or five years and uh, you were aware of it we were aware of it we finally got our arms around it to understand what it was that was causing um, the behavior that we were seeing um, she was uh, put on medication by a psychiatrist uh, she she went to counseling to therapy with a uh, psychologist and was doing really, really beautifully. Um, she was a competitive swimmer uh, at her high school, actually all throughout her age, uh, her, her uh, uh, younger age. And she was also an all-American cheerleader. So obviously she had every reason to live. Every reason to live, just, just uh, um, funny. Uh, she, she used to kid me all the time. Uh, just a, a real joy to be around. And uh, she, uh, right toward the end, she started having a little bit of trouble sleeping, and her psychiatrist made an adjustment to her medication regimen. And about four, maybe five days later, she took her life. Um, and it, it was, it was, I, I didn't see it coming. I didn't, I didn't know what was, what was going on. What is the impact of something like that? Um, when, when people say that losing a child is the toughest thing for a parent to ever go through, um, because that's, you're supposed to go before them. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, um, that, that that saying is an understatement. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I remember vividly the day that it, the evening that it happened, um, and you know, I, I'm quick to tell people that had it not been for my faith for the strength of my faith, I never would have made it through those first several so, days. So it, you had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Absolutely. And Absolutely. did you at any moment say, why? Absolutely. Why? Yes. Oh, oh, definitely. I definitely asked that question. But it, 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 what I find interesting looking back is that I didn't ask the question until some months later. Um, I remember that evening just the, the, the anxiety and the pain uh, that I was going through and I was screaming out for Jesus just to, to let her live. Um, but, but I knew I was going to be okay when we were, my pastor, one of the associate pastors from my church and I were uh, in the uh, uh, in one of the rooms in the emergency room area at so the she, hospital. So apparently she wasn't dead when you found her. Well, I'm not sure whether she was or, okay. or was not, so but they, they, tried took to her to, they tried to revive her, tried for 45 minutes, it was to no avail. 
Um, but, but as we stood there, the doctor came in and said, we've, you know, we've tried and we just can't save her, she's gone. I looked around the room and I said to them, we need to pray and let me lead the prayer. And that was when I knew that, that I was gonna be okay. Um, it's just as real right now as it was then, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it really is. It's just as painful. Yeah. Um, but I still have joy. Yeah. And that joy comes from knowing that I'm going to see her again. Amen. Amen. Uh, just like the song says. Yes. Streets I'm, of gold. I'm living to yeah. live again, to walk yeah. the streets of gold. Yes. Uh, in a place where we'll never yeah. grow old. Yeah, never grow old. We'll never grow old. Uh, and, and so a few months after, uh, after Lauren took her life, I, I remember very vividly one morning after my workout, uh, I was heading upstairs to take a shower to go to work, and I asked God the question. I said, why, Lord, why her and not me? And just as clearly as I hear your voice as we're talking right now, God said to me, because I have something for you to do. At that point, I had not uh, gone into the studio to record. Um, I had actually, uh, when I rededicated my life to the Lord, probably three or four years prior to that, um, I started writing music again. I had written popular music, R&B, way back in my, in my younger days, but I hadn't written for about 20 years. And I rededicated myself to the Lord. Uh, uh, my, my muse came back. I started writing again. Your and this brother time, Doug was part of that? My, well, my brother Doug was with me in the early days okay. when, we, okay. when we, right. uh, we, we had an R&B vocal group, kind of patterned ourselves after the Temptations and Good. the Four oh, Times. I remember yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Doug now plays with the, he plays tenor sax with the Count Basie Orchestra. Goodness. So, yeah, yeah. So we've got tour <laughs> all over your family. Goodness. We, God, is, God is blessed. Oh he's, he got, he's, he's in the blessing business, yes, and, and, yes. and he doesn't hold back when he, when he blesses. Um, but, but at that point, when God told me I have something for you to do, that's when I realized that I needed to, to step out and to go into the studio and record some of the songs that, uh, that he had sent through me to his people uh, so that they might edify uh, uh, his people. And so I went into the studio, uh, recorded my first project. This, uh, this one that we're doing songs from today is my second. Okay, keep pressing is the second The, the second one. Okay. CD, yes. Uh, but I recorded the first, uh, the first CD, it's called My Journey. And I even have one of the songs on there that Lauren actually helped me to write. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, it's a song called Jesus is so they, the Way. So if they go to your website on the screen right now, they can pick that up. They can pick up my journey okay. and uh, yeah, okay. they can hear some songs okay. off, of, off of that, including the one that, okay. that Lauren helped uh, to write, Jesus is the Way. Um, but, but God really, really wow. blessed uh, with, uh, blessed me with good people on my team to, to assist me in pulling all of this together. Uh, he brought me together with a producer by the name of Minister Stephen Ford, who has won Grammys and Stellars and Dove Awards. Um, and he's done all the arrangements. Well, he knew he had a product right here. Well, he, he, he knew he had something to work with. He knew he had something to work with. And uh, yeah. uh, the arrangements that you hear uh, on, on this project and the last one uh, are his. He's an anointed man of God. Wow. And we, we, we just, we clicked. We had church in the studio. We did. Every time we, every time we went in to record, we had church. And all of the musicians probably were not used to that. No, well, it, it because, much of because I've heard I've heard of born again believers walking into a studio doing a, a record, right? And they would have prayer, and and I, and I've read what they've said. They go, everybody was in shock because it's like they're used to cursing, you know, oh, just yeah, a flippant way of doing things. And all of a sudden, like you say, church comes in. Yeah. Well, and in and in this instance, the musicians that we that Minister Ford used, most of them are are, are Christians. Good. Virtually all of them are Christians, as far as as far as I know. Wow. Um, and he, we we did some of the recording in the Philadelphia area, which is where I'm from. Um, he did some work down in Atlanta. Um, some of the musicians, actually the horn section was from Nashville. Wow. So, uh, yeah, we really pulled in. Doylestown, PA. Doylestown. Doylestown. Where's Doylestown. that at? It's just a little bit north of Philadelphia, about 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's a, you, one you, of the suburbs. You, you hail from uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas. I, I, was, I was born in North Little Rock, Arkansas. And you grew up in Grambling, Grambling Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes. 
That's uh, in the in the northern part of the state. It's uh, it's the home of. Uh, a historically black university, Grambling State yes. University. Now, my father was on faculty have you, have there. You, have you watched their halftime shows? Oh, the band? Uh, one of my best friends was the youngest son of the band director, so we spent a lot of time <sighs> between hanging out at football practice, the college football practice, and, and band practice. We did it when we were very young. That was, that was what you did after school wow. if you weren't playing. Goodness yeah. gracious. It was, uh, it was a beautiful place to grow up. Can you do about a minute and a half for me? Mm -hmm. Just look at that camera right there and share Christ with someone that may be going through what Lauren went through. Be happy to. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm drawn to Joshua 1 and 5. Good. That's the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and you know, God told Joshua as he told Moses, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There are times in our lives when it seems that all hope is gone. It, it seems that nothing is going right. It seems that even though the sun's shining, we've got a cloud hanging over our heads. Yes. And it's at, at times like those that we must turn and lift our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Because we know that our help comes from the Lord. And when he made that promise to us that he would never leave us nor forsake us, Amen. inherent in that promise is his grace and his mercy that will undergird us, that will lift us up and carry us through any trial any tribulation that we that we might face. He wants us to lean on him. Amen. He wants to wrap his arms, his loving arms around us. He wants to give us the desires of our hearts. Yes. And he wants to do that just because he loves us. We, we can't earn the type of love, the, the, the degree of love that he has for us. That's grace. It's grace. It's grace. And, and we're, we, 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 we have faith in him because of his grace and because of his mercy. You know, that song that says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That, too, is part of my testimony. Amen. I'm going to give you this, and then I'm going to say a few words just before. What, what is the song you're going to sing for us right now? I need you. Okay. Take your place. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. This song will allow you just to surrender to him. And I have said this to him so often. I need you. Are you going through trouble? Are you going through those valleys in your life that right now the only thing that comes out is I need you. Is that right? Then during this song, cry out to him right now. God bless you, comrade. Help me treat, help me treat my neighbor right. 
want to be pleasing. Lord, in your sight. I need you. I need you. I need you, Jesus. Yeah. I need you, Jesus. Yes, I do. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap, come on. Anybody hear me, Jesus? Woo! Oh, I need you. I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. Oh, I need you. I need you. Every step, every step. When I need, need a breakthrough. I need you. I know I can count on you. Need you in the morning. Need you in the noon day, need you in the evening, in the midnight hour. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Need you. Need you. Need you. Lord, I need you. Need you every step, every step. Late in the midnight hour. Lord, I need to feel your power. When I'm all alone, need your hand. Oh, oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Oh, I need you.